Well, good morning, everyone. This is R Vermil 47, Robert Vermillion, coming to you from Dallas, Texas. Today is May the 15th, 2012. Currently, the time is 11.42 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. Um, this is the uh, coronal mass ejection uh, forecast, and we see we still have the two to get here. Um, I want to pause it because... And it, come forward just a bit to when if it was going to be the coronal mass ejection that caused our interplanetary shock wave this morning or was it um, the solar uh, when the solar coronal hole I can't talk today the high speed wind stream from the solar coronal hole or the, the big solar triangle as we talked about yesterday but if I put it right here this would show that the flanking part of this CME really shouldn't reach us until later on this day. Now, again, I, you know, I know this is a forecast, and this little fast one behind it could be pushing it f further up. So we'll just have to see. Uh, the, right now, what, what I've read, they're still uh, kind of like looking at data, trying to decide whether it's actually uh, one of the coronal mass ejections or if it's just, again, the high-speed coronal hole wind stream. But... Uh, in any event, we've got the two that will come out. We had thir the one on the 13th and then the, the one uh, yesterday. And it was a fast one. So it's very possible that uh, this forecast is behind. And, and, I mean, also our wind speeds have jumped to like almost 800 kilometers per second. And this doesn't pick up on that. So I'd kind of use this model today as the outlier model just I wouldn't put a lot of faith in the timing on it. The data, I would say, is should be pretty correct. It's just the timing that's probably off on it. There's the real-time solar wind parameters from the ACE satellite. And um, you can see when the interplanetary shock wave hit this morning, again, around 12 universal time, uh, the BZ component first went sharply north, and as a, I was kind of say jokingly, that's like shields up. We put our shields up, and um, well, the Earth put its shields up, and then they went back down, and they've stayed on the, in the negative on the south uh, uh, inclination uh, for the last few hours, and that has allowed us to go into a G1 geomagnetic storm. Now, uh, the CANDEX has made it up to uh, five, and I believe it's uh, uh, the forecast is at least up to six. Uh, the wind speeds jump from about uh, 500 to 600 kilometers per second up to near 800. So a pretty good jump in wind speed is a pretty good uh, uh, interplanetary impact. Uh, temperatures up, densities up. So we'll just say that we know that we got hit with the shockwave around 12Z this morning. Here's the satellite environment uh, chart which shows the K index here again and storm levels. It's a G1. It's not a, a major storm, but you can see the uh, GOES magnetometer showing the, uh, as I call it, the bell ringing around the plan, planet. And um, we'll probably see that continue uh, on and off. We should see elevated uh, geomagnetic storming taking place for at least several hours. Uh, if not from just the coronal hole, from the two CMEs that may have combined uh, geomagnetic storming or even substorming is going to be prevalent for the next 12 to 24 hours. So Aurora Watchers, if you're not sick of watching them yet, which how could you be, uh, keep looking for them because you probably get to see them. Uh, the electron flux, I, it, electrons... The, the monitor always kind of gets screwed up when we have a geomagnetic storm. Uh, although we were in electron, we had met threshold for uh, a, a low-end electron storm yesterday. And I would say we probably still are in it. Uh, it just It's just kind of hard to tell. So that data is kind of like weak right there. So I wouldn't uh, put it too much, again, too much faith in that reading right there. Protons, easily to see that they dropped off. In fact, we're well below now the uh, S1 storm level. So no solar radiation storms going on at the moment. Uh, even low energy, um, I mean high energy 
protons are uh, settling out. Uh, barring any uh, solar flares today that happen to be proton in nature, uh, that should continue to drop off today. Now a quick look at uh, the coronal hole that we were taking a look at yesterday, which was more about right here, it has moved over here. Looks more kind of like a uh, hourglass, doesn't it now? Not just such a, a triangle. Anyway, it is in very geo-effective position, so anything blowing out of it should be reaching the Earth or be near Earth now. And that's why I believe that this morning's impact has a lot to do with this coronal hole. Still interesting, uh, it, it's just another one of those interesting phenomenons when you can look at it and see differences and like shapes and stuff. Uh, some nice prominences over here. We've got our flare here, or our sunspot uh, group here in the middle, which could give us some more flares today or over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Uh, it hasn't put off any proton flares. It did give us that M3 uh, flare yesterday. So we'll just keep an eye on that area right there. Okay, I'm going to move on into Earth weather just because uh, things continue to look like they're setting up for some severe weather in the central sections of the United States uh, by the end of the weekend and early next week. Here's the strong jet coming in. This is the 300 millibar uh, height uh, map as of 12Z this morning. And um, it shows um, the at the jet stream level, a strong jet coming in uh, over 100 knots again. In fact, uh, probably into almost 130 knots coming in this area. And this is the big storm that's going to be moving in slowly. We've got the uh, subtropical jet down here that has the occasional uh, elevated wind speeds. And this might give me a thunderstorm again today. I didn't get anything yesterday, but uh, we, there's another 10% chance today. Uh, the thing is, is uh, this is a good map to show you that when winds go apart like this and like this, and you've got this area in the middle that's called defluence in the upper atmosphere and where they where the winds split that's where you can get some of the best lift and uh, when we look at the convective outlooks I can tell you that there's going to be probably a chance of severe thunderstorms in this area anyway again this is the puppy to watch this is the one that's going to probably give us our next best severe weather outbreak of the season beginning on Monday here is the day one uh, convective outlook from the Storm Prediction Center and there is the uh, slight risk of severe weather mainly uh, high winds uh, pretty good hailstorms they've been having hailstorms uh, uh, several hailstorms were reported yesterday some decent ones uh, some wind reports are going to be reported out of this uh, again I know I harp on it uh, you can't ever roll out a tornado in severe thunderstorms but right now the, the winds are set up to where it's more uh, uh, I'd say with the defluence and some of the way the winds are not turning with height that uh, tornadoes are not that likely but again as I always say you can uh, severe thunderstorms can and occasionally do produce tornadoes but anyway we see that we've got the green which is the just generic uh, thunderstorms surrounding this area and again, that just shows that we've got a, a good juicy atmosphere going on now in the eastern section of the United States. And uh, it's just kind of waiting on this system coming from over here. So uh, let's, let's look at tomorrow's outlook. Okay, this is a day two outlook, which would be for Friday. And uh, now we're starting to see the effects of the storm system coming into the center of the United States. Um, I would say there's probably a pretty good chance of some pretty large hail coming out of this area. And again, this is the slight risk. It's uh, They've not elevated it to like anything other than slight or moderate, you know. Um, again, the entire eastern United States is not going to get like rained on, but it's the, the probabilities are there for thunderstorms. But we'll watch for the Texas Panhandle into uh, western Oklahoma for uh, the possibility of some pretty good hailstorms, um, 
some pretty good wind reports. And again, the tornado risk, I would say, would be a bit more elevated with this because we're going to start seeing some dry line activity. And plus, we've got what's called a cap, uh, a pretty good cap above, or some people call it the lid, which is just a, an area of warmer air above the colder air below. And when cold air tries to go up, it, it bumps into that warm air and it it stops. So something has to push it on up through to get a thunderstorm going. And sometimes when it, you get the, enough energy to push it through the cap, then you've got some uh, possible uh, chance to have better severe weather, which includes some tornadoes. So we'll keep an eye on this. This We could see this risk uh, upgraded. Uh, or or even just the slot risk area just it could be mod modified to be a little bit larger. Now again, I've showed you the day uh, four through eight severe weather outlook before. And again, we've got uh, finally now they're showing two days. This is day four. We saw this yesterday uh, where there is a, uh, uh, it's like a 30% chance or higher probability for a severe thunderstorm within 25 miles of any given point. Did you get that? Anyway, so this is day four, which would be Sunday into Monday. That's when we start seeing stuff forming in the panhandle. And day five, it moves a little further east. This system, when it comes in, the computer models are beginning to get confused with it and they're having a problem. Uh, they want to slow it down. Some of them want to slow it down. Some of them want to just keep it going. Uh, one or the other is going to make a big difference. Uh, either way, there's going to be uh, some severe weather in the central United States, without a doubt. If it slows down, we could see some pretty bad flooding in this area because there's going to be lots and lots of moisture associated with this. So anyway, space weather, again, is elevated right now. Geomagnetic storming should continue over the next 12 to 24 hours. And... Um, Earth weather looks like uh, springtime is uh, fixing to come back and uh, hopefully not with a vengeance, but again, when they can uh, forecast uh, or they have co enough confidence to forecast severe weather this far out in advance, you know, something's up for the central parts of the United States. Well, that's it. Uh, Y'all have a good one and uh, I'll check in with you later.